Hey everyone, welcome back to The Learning Curve. Today we're diving into ionic bonding, a key topic in IGCC chemistry. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our video on covalent bonding, it's linked in the description. Now let's get started. Ionic bonding is when atoms transfer electrons to form charged particles called ions. This happens between a metal and a non-metal. Here's the key idea. Metals always lose electrons forming positive ions called cations. Non-metals always gain electrons forming negative ions called anions. These oppositely charged ions attract, forming a strong electrostatic force, which is the ionic bond. Now, how does this ionic bonding compare to covalent bonding? If you remember from our covalent bonding video, non-metals don't like to give up electrons, so they share them instead. That's why covalent bonding happens between two non-metals. But in ionic bonding, metals are happy to give away electrons, and non-metals are eager to take them. This electron transfer creates ions, which attract each other, forming a strong bond. Let's take a look at a real-world example, table salt. Sodium is a metal with one electron in its outer shell. Chlorine is a non-metal with seven electrons. Sodium loses its one electron, forming an Na plus ion, and chlorine gains that electron, forming a Cl minus ion. The Na plus and Cl minus ions attract, forming an ionic bond. And just like that you have sodium chloride or table salt. So, how can you tell if a compound is ionic? Look for these signs. It's made of a metal and non-metal. It has a high melting and boiling point. It conducts electricity when molten or dissolved. For example, table salt dissolves in water and can conduct electricity. But what about magnesium oxide? Let's break it down. Magnesium is a metal with two electrons in its outer shell. It loses both electrons to form Mg2+. Oxygen is a non-metal with six electrons in its outer shell. It gains those two electrons to form O2-. The Mg2 plus and O2 minus ions attract, forming an ionic bond. Now, let's test your understanding with some IGCSE style questions. Grab a pen and paper and try them out. Question 1. Potassium reacts with fluorine to form an ionic compound, potassium fluoride. A. Describe how potassium and fluorine form an ionic bond. B. Write the electron configuration of potassium and fluorine before and after bonding. Pause the video and give it a try. Here's the answer. Potassium is a metal with one electron in its outer shell. It loses this electron forming a K plus ion. Fluorine is a non-metal with seven electrons in its outer shell. It gains one electron forming an F minus ion. The K plus and F minus ions attract, forming an ionic bond. Now let's look at the electron configurations. Potassium is in period 4 and group 1. That means it has three fully filled shell and its outermost shell has one valence electron. So its configuration is 2, 8, 8, 1. After losing one electron, the fully filled shell underneath is exposed. Its electron configuration therefore is 2, 8, 8. Fluorine is in group 7 and period 2, so its electron configuration is 2, 7. After gaining one electron, it becomes 2 and 8. Question 2. A solution of sodium chloride conducts electricity, but solid sodium chloride does not. Explain why. Pause the video and give it a try. In solid sodium chloride, the ions are locked in place in a lattice structure, so they can't move. But when sodium chloride is dissolved in water or melted, the ions are free to move, allowing the solution to conduct electricity. Let's quickly recap what we've learned today. Ionic bonding happens between metals and nonmetals through electron transfer. Metals always lose electrons to form cations. Non-metals always gain electrons to form anions. Ionic bonds form due to strong electrostatic attractions between these oppositely charged particles. Ionic compounds conduct electricity only when dissolved or molten. 
That's it for today's lesson. If you found this helpful, hit the like button, subscribe and let us know in the comments which topics you want us to cover next. See you in the next video and happy studying!